Hi, this is Brick Czar. My name's Joseph, and I'm going to show you what a BrickLink store is. And I don't know about other BrickLink stores. I can only show you mine, of course. But many, many times people wonder, is it safe to buy on BrickLink, or what am I doing when I go to BrickLink? Well, I have an inventory here of extra parts that I've accumulated over the years, stuff I've decided to sell. And I go on to BrickLink.com, and I upload my inventory, and it's available for sale. So when you go to BrickLink, you're going to be buying from an individual seller, a private person like myself. And you can't really combine from other stores, so each order you place with a different store. Uh, you know, I'm here in, where I live. Somebody could be on the other side of the country. Somebody could be in Europe and or wherever across the world. It's, it's just global sites. But it's a really nice way to get parts uh, if you're trying to make a model or um, you need a specific part to finish the set, you look at these seller stores and you can find it. I, I know I've, I've used it many, many times to buy stuff for my collection, but you end up getting too much like I do and you have to sell it. So I'm going to show you how I pick an order and the process I go through and maybe it'll help sellers too. Uh, I'm working on getting a little more organized than what I got, uh, but I've, I've enjoyed selling to people on BrickLink and I'm going to show you that now. So somebody places an order, then I get a copy of that order. I print out the list of the parts that they have ordered. And I do this from my, my BrickLink page. And usually what I'll do is I'll print it out a smaller size where I can get it all on one page. And I'll print it out. Okay, I've printed out the order. So I come over to my printer and I get my order. I'll go over here in the light. So I get all the parts they order. Now I have a color printer, but I I decide to print black and white because it's cheaper, and I just have to make sure I look at the color of the item when I go to pick them. And I get me a box or something to collect them. And I well in my store, um, it kind of got out of hand. I didn't intend initially for it to grow so fast but I got some good deals on Lego and then I would each day I would add more parts to my inventory so I ended up putting them in these bins and I labeled the bins and that's how I know where to find the parts some of them they're not in bins so it makes them a little more difficult to find I'm going to eventually get them all organized where I could have somebody come in here like where my kids or something they could pick the order and know where everything is but for instance um, I have some stuff in these drawers I've labeled, but this one's la labeled plate modified. And on this particular order, the person has ordered these, which I already had looked at, these um, jumper bricks, plate modified with one stud on top. He ordered all of them that I have. So I'll double check that, so I put those in there. This is the problem with my inventories. I, I don't have it completely organized. Ooh, I just happened to find it right there. This guy ordered part 3938. He ordered 13 of them. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Of course, he ordered all of them. So that's 18, 24, that's 40, 44. So I was right. I like to double check, even though I, I knew he had ordered all of them. Sometimes it, I made a mistake on a previous order. They might not, not all be there, but they were. So that was good. So I'll mark that one off. Okay. Another way I can verify what I got is he also ordered this 32 Zero 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 part. These Technic bricks. And I'm going to look at my inventory. So I type in the part number and look at my inventory, and I don't have any more dark bluish gray. So he did. He ordered all of them. So I'll go ahead and put those in there. I'll double check it um, after I do the video. But he ordered the entire amount in my inventory. All right. I've been picking the orders that are on this side of my store of my warehouse, and I've got this is what I've got so far here. See, sure that. And then now I'll go to the other side and pick the rest of them. i got to get some more light down here. Um, I get over to this side, it's in the dark. But I usually set my box down and then I'll look. And This part is in box Z1 and only I know where box Z1 is. And now I forgot where it is. Oh, there it is. Under all this. This is one problem. Oh, right in front of the there for you. Z1 which was the curved slope dark bush gray 
78 of them. Whew. And there they are. So far, he's ordered my entire stock of everything in the particular part that he's ordered. So I'll check that off. Only got a few more to go. Some wheels. It's in the wheel drawer. And I'll look at the part number. It's part number 30391. 30391. There it is. I wrote on the bag 30391. He wanted six of them. And there are six in there. So throw those on me. And I need one more item. It's these torsos in this inbox A1. And here they are. Now I gotta make sure I get the right one. It's this one. I need 42 of those. So I got all the parts, the invoice. And then I'll go over to the shipping department. For the um, order, or actually on your inventory, I don't know if a lot of sellers do this, but this is how I keep track where everything is. Um, I'll show the order. But there's, let me go to my inventory, be an easier way of doing it. Take a particular part. Oops, inventory. <laughs> inventory. All right. Uh, this is a, some stuff that's in my inventory, and there's a section on BrickLink when you're listing stuff. It's called My Remarks, and I'll put the particular container or box or description telling me where that part is so I can find it. Like This one is in gray C2. This one's in my Technics bricks drawer. So i got to get a more efficient way, an alphanumeric system like they use in warehouses uh, so that I can find it. Now we'll go over to the shipping department. And now we're in the shipping area of my basement. I have a wide assortment of boxes and padded envelopes and things like that. that I've, a lot of them I've gotten for free. Some of them I've, I've purchased. I got a good deal with these padded envelopes on, on eBay. I had a, somebody gave me a bunch of them at one time. Priority mail boxes are free. Uh, if you pick those up, uh, post office, they'll deliver them to you. Go to USPS.com. But I think this is fit in this priority mail box. And this person, he lives in Minnesota, so a lot of times if it's two pounds or less, it's going to be cheaper to ship it prior, priority mail than even parcel post. So what I'm going to do first is see if all these parts will fit in this small box, which I think they will. And they do, so um, these parts, it's, it's, there's nothing really fragile except for the minifigures, but it, it's always nice to put a little padding in there. I got some bubble wrap. I always save my bubble wrap from things that I buy so I can reuse it. And I'll put the parts in there. I'll put the minifigures in the middle and throw the rest of this on top of it. Go like that. Put the invoice in. Close the box up. And the box is ready to go. And then we're going to go verify the weight. I had this estimate based on the, the weights that BrickLink has and the weight of my box. I figured it was two pounds, so that's what I based the shipping on. I'll show you how you, I figured that out. This is my scale. I actually have a couple of scales. This one's 35 pound scale. I got one for weighing heavier boxes, which I don't usually have. but you got to have a good scale that measures to the tenth of an ounce if you're going to sell on eBay or um, BrickLink. So I put the box on there, and sure enough, it's one pound, 13.1 ounces. So I was right. I fig I based the shipping on two pounds, and it was right under two pounds. And with the post office, it's always you round up to the next pound. Uh, so and the way you can figure that, uh oh, <laughs> tricky box. Get that out of the way. It's a mess down here. So go to the USPS website, you go to calculator price, and 
Okay, I put in a zip code. Oops, three oh one two three. For instance, if I was shipping it to Beverly Hills, nine oh two one oh. If it was a package and it weighed two pounds, they would tell me that it would cost. I'll go here to priority mail to ship it. Priority mail, I, it would cost ten dollars and forty cents at the post office, nine sixty two online. And I always do the online price. And I'm not one of those that'll pass on costs to the the seller. I mean the buyer too much. I'll you know I'll charge them ex exact ship and I don't inflate it. So that's that's what I do. So I, I'm in the United States. Um, some sellers in Europe, they get taxed so much that they'll pass on costs like PayPal fees and other fees, and it, it can really cost a lot to buy something from overseas. But you always check, if you're buying on BrickLink, always check the seller splash page to find out more information about their shipping costs and so you don't get surprised uh, when you go there. And like here, I'll go to my store. You got splash and store terms. Mine are the same, but you, you, it'll, you'll have the terms of how they figure up shipping and what the minimum order is, what payments they accept. So each seller, they're all, they're all private sellers, so you, you want to research that and always look at one that has good feedback. Now, before I had done, started this video, we had already sent the invoice to the person who purchased these items. And I wasn't even sure if it was going to be under two pounds, um, the box. But anytime it's over what I tell them, I, do, I, I absorb the cost of that. But anyway, I was glad everything ended up correct with my order. But in the time that we did the video, he had paid me. He paid pretty quick. So I printed out the label which you got here. I won't show you the address, but um, I just use a regular piece of paper, slap it on the box, and I'll put some tape. You just don't cover over the barcode with the tape and his package will be in the mail in the morning.